Hello. I'm back, yet again. This is a compulsory crash course for all of you and plebs. So stay put where you are. Neural upgrade, or mods for short, is a way to power up specific doll beyond LV100. They gain a new skill, Bruh. change their outfit and generally, gets more useful. I will rank every single to stars mods in this video based on their usefulness. All of this is 100% subjective fact and you cannot change my mind. With that all set, let us commence. Bushman individual defense weapon. Danaya gets a mod. Who would have guessed? She gains 10% crit rate to her buff tiles. Useful but too small to make a significant difference. Her mod skill is sad. She wanted to be a hybrid SMG like Honey Badger, but her second skill deals too little damage to be actually useful. Her base form is already bad and her mod brings nothing new to the table but immense mean power to amuse the end players. If you're feeling funny, you can try making Cat Girl Echelon with M500, P7, Art 556, TMP and IDW. Don't expect magic though. Dalama Therpica. D tier. Hold on. I know I said IDW is trash, but that doesn't stop people from memeing the hell out of her. This fucking legend used a super buffed IDW mod 3 and turned M16 boss fight in CT into a joke. Welcome to C tier. Dolls in this tier rarely see the battlefield either being specialists fulfilling a specific role, or heavily outclassed by better, and often more attractive, higher rarity dolls. HKG3 Her buff tile is fixed to actually buff someone useful, definitely learned the lesson from Uzi and AS Val. Her mod skill at either stun enemies if they are above 50% HP, otherwise deals a 416-ish grenade. If you want a grenadier, you have a free sock being best doggo. If you want flashbang, there are a load of SMGs that can do the job much faster and a lot cheaper. This makes her isn't that much more useful than a normal AR grenadier while bearing the HK price. Very expensive. I hope you are into thick goth girl. C tier. Type 64 SMG. Her tile is comparable to Vector's. Her stun nade now applies debuff like a slightly rubbish well read. Somewhat useful if your enemy looks a bit like this. That said, you'd rather want a mortar hawk or grenadiers to disperse the angry crowd. If you really want to use her, she's not bad but a bit too expensive for what she offers. But then, waifu supremacy always win. C tier. Throw flashbang. Beretta model 38. Her tiles now buff ARs and RS. Her buffs are quite minuscule, not a huge change. It is suggesting a rar FSMG echelon which actually rarely see usage and even with that, there are much better options. Her mod skill adds a mini molotov along with the stun grenade. It's very weak even at skill level 10 so don't expect miracle. I suggest you'd better off using a proper molotov SMG which has far better ICD and can actually kill things. Other than that, she's just as useful as this SMG that insist on making a family with you. At least her art looks cute. <laughs> yeah, boy. C tier. Throwing flashbang. I am I Galil. Seems like Micah knows the Galil super buffed accuracy meme, so they made it become a thing. Too bad she still suck. Galil now buffed to ARs on her sides with evasion and accuracy. How useful. Her mod skill allows her to convert excess accuracy into crit rate. Now this sounds like something that you could pair Jill's Bleeding Jane with. 
but then her mod skill doesn't give her more crit rate if she's at 100% crit rate or above. Jill's bleeding Jane won't be that useful. However, her mod skill allows her to easily hit 100% crit rate at night, given only a decent PEQ. But then she will suffer from not having a strong self buff skill, unlike other night ARs. Fuck you Micah. C tier. Welcome to B tier. You will find most of your standard issue here, in which I mean commonly found in standard mid game echelon. If you find yourself being unlucky in dolls construction, they will come in handy. These dolls are still outclassed by better, and often more attractive, higher rarity dolls, but only by a little. MP446 Viking her tiles buff now increases to 36% damage, same as MK23 but can cover a wider area. Her mod skill gives allies 20% rate of fire for 4 seconds. Simple and effective. The problem lies in her inferior debuff skill. They do help her to survive a bit longer, but not from certain death. Compare her to Welrod, she does better at buffing but worse at tanking. Despite the nickname Viking, she doesn't come from Denmark. Norway or Sweden. Weird. B tier. And to defend this city of Stalingrad! Forward against the enemy! Up into the unremitted battle towards for Stalingrad! For our great country! Not one step back! Cowards and traitors will be Nagant Revolver Model 1895, 36% damage and 20% crit rate. She has the same problem with MP446, having a first skill as a debuff skill. Unlike MP446, her first skill is the better one. If you have a shielder, in this case HS2000, you will take very little damage against enemies AoE attacks. This fucking legend took on the challenge of defeating 45 manticores, just like this. Her mod skill gives 10% damage and accuracy every 7th shot and activate once upon entering battle. Yes. It is small but the amount of pure damage buff right at the beginning of combat is unmatched. Very useful for triggering special effects such as AS Val Mod and Pekala. She's one of the first revolvers to have a suppressor. One of your very first T-Doll that eventually led you to the Hall of Ultima Dalaos. Also speaks in old Japanese accent. She might not be meter, but please, appreciate her. B-tier. <laughs> Type 64 SMG, again. This time she comes with another special equipment, her exoskeleton. This tiny little thing upgrades her grenades to remove enemy HP shield and buffs. It is incredibly useful against enemies rely on HP shield. Some of them are these big guys and this jumpy Metherfica. If you really hate these things and you don't have Desert Eagle, she might come in handy. I know this spec has nothing to do with her mod form, but putting Type 64 in C tier wouldn't do her justice. Also for an old friend. B tier. Fabrique National Model 1949. Her mod skill gives her 15% bonus rate of fire when her main skill is active. Simple and effective. She's basically M14 mod, but slightly less DPS for a reduced price. Her DPS is also proved to be slightly better than Lee Enfield without her scope. Very cheap for such firepower so if you need more rifles, go for her.
Little trivia. Later variants of the rifle FN-49 has a fire selector that allows her to go absolutely nuts on full auto. But judging from she uses full power rifle ammunition, FN-49 on full auto is just as impractical as M-14. B tier. Colt Model 1911. Her mod skill bap enemies after she throws the smoke with 7 shots of massive damage and temporary tinnitus. A decent skill that potentially hit dangerous enemies very early on in combat but not exactly useful against late game enemies. But come on. The visual. The sound. Such power. It is just plain cool. She's also the only HG that has a smoke. I guess I don't have to tell you how useful smoke is. For whatever reason, all of her voice align and mod form refuse to call you darling. Micah what the f little trivia. She's the only pistol that shot down a plane. By this guy. B tier. <laughs> Welcome to A tier. Where the big boys gather up for a drink and dab on the weaklings. That was not supposed to rhyme. They are generally powerful and absolutely can fare against better, and often more attractive, higher rarity dolls. They might not define the meter of this game, but highly recommended to have at least one. General Dynamics LWMMG. Great first folly MG. Great in-game CG. Great costumes. Great doll. Her mod skill allows her to give HP shield to the doll on her tiles and this amount of HP shield ramps up at an incredibly stupid rate upon skill activation. Even PD Negev approves her. Little trivia. LWMMG uses .308 Lapua Magnum cartridge, which is the same as most high-powered sniper rifle, including the AW Magnum. This costume is a reference to this anime show. If you type LWMMG in some Chinese keyboard, you get this. <laughs> <laughs> 